you know, the mind has, we all know that probably about 60,000 thoughts and it keeps giving them. And yeah, if we believe these thoughts, then it's, it's, it's a problem. The biggest piece of our suffering is believing our thoughts because the mind doesn't even make sense. It keeps giving, 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 giving. And I mean, control our thoughts that would be great if we could because we would only think happy thoughts, right? If you're sad and if you keep thinking, oh, my eggs are bad, eh. you know, it affects the quality of the eggs. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. It's where we blend spirituality and practicality to help you live a life of purpose and joy. Today, we have Saskia Rowell with us. She's a former professor of behavioral and social sciences in the Netherlands, and she's gone on to become a world-renowned mind-body-spirit fertility expert. Now, that's a mouthful. She helps women around the world become mothers. Over the years, I've admired Saskia's success rate with her clients and have often recommended her. So if you or someone you know is trying to conceive, this conversation is for you. Please remember to subscribe, leave a comment, and share this episode with your family and friends. Sazia, I'm so excited to have you on this show, girl. I think I've been on your show like four times or something. So it's about time. Welcome, welcome. I love it. I'm so excited. Yay. It feels like you're sitting with me in my kitchen. Absolutely. Well, we've we've done this so many times that I feel like you know, we we are our sisters from a different mister kind of a thing yeah, together. We yeah, yeah. I wanted to have you on the show today just because of you've done such a great job of connecting the mind, body, spirit equation together, not only for fertility and pregnancy, but I think with bigger implications too about overall health. So that's why I think it makes sense for everybody to listen. We've all known women, whether they be us or our daughters or now our granddaughters sometimes that are dealing with fertility issues. And the bigger picture is what's going on with them and then what's going on really with any kind of disease or illness or a medical condition. So that's why I'm so excited to chat with you today about all of that. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm looking forward to it. What does the mind body spirit connection mean to you and how does it affect fertility and pregnancy? Yeah, to me it makes so much sense that our our body, mind and spirit are connected and that when we are in that alignment and when we are in that so to say embodiment we are aligned, uh, things flow. But what I see in my work as a fertility coach is that when there is interference or misalignment, because in the mind there's a lot going on, it affects the body. And this is a really overlooked piece, I believe, in the medical world where a lot of women don't know that, yeah, they're not blocked physically. It's not their hormones. It's not their gut biome. They've checked all of that, but then they keep miscarrying or they try for four years. I just got a, a Instagram message from a woman and she said, I've, I've, I've tried for four years and I can't get pregnant, but I have one son. But then in her history, she had an abortion. So where my mind goes, because she's healthy, everything is checked. Could it be that there is a trauma block? What's invisible, of course, for the outside, but where I don't know, I haven't spoken to her, there may be guilt or it's unprocessed or that's where in my work, I find it so fascinating to see results where sometimes they try for 10 years and they don't understand and they keep trying. They do 16 IVFs. Of course, that doesn't work if there's if there's a mental block or an emotional block or a body mistrust block or a trauma block. It interferes. The body mind spirit isn't connected as it should, because I believe we are fertile. Yeah, makes right. a lot of sense to me. And in my life, of course, it makes also 
a lot of sense. I have five children. I was very blessed for sons, one daughter. But yeah, if 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 I'm blocked in my mind, it, it will show up in my work or it will show up in my body or the, the, the connection is there or in my soul. Yeah. To me, I live with this, Julie. Yeah. Oh, I know. And you talk to your clients every day about this kind of thing. Is that why, and I know multiple women just in my sphere of friends and family who had a child had what they called secondary infertility. In some instances, they adopted a child and then boom, all of a sudden they ended up getting pregnant. Is that what's going on in a lot of those instances? Because they didn't do anything different medically. No, but maybe they had a lot of stress going on and then they, they allowed the stress to go or they opened their minds in a different way and they got pregnant. Sometimes they say, oh, get a dog. I always feel a little bit like, eh, doesn't completely work that way, but it will take your mind off the obsessiveness because here's what happens. I call it the iceberg theory is like where, or the infertility um, mm -hmm. iceberg theory, as I've called it, where on the top, say there of the iceberg is the body, this is where we can see everything. This is where they say, oh, you have poor air quality or oh, you have low AMH or oh, you, um, your hormones aren't in check. Say that's the body, but the whole piece underneath, that's where these invisible, for example, in secondary infertility, it could be a mindset block where a woman becomes obsessed with getting pregnant. But in the meanwhile, I had a, um, a client with secondary infertility and the first child was conceived really fast and easy, but it was so hard to deal with that first year and she lost control of herself of everything. So she literally said to me, it, it, it feels if I have a second baby, it will destroy me. So we had to do a lot of work here in, in mindsets. And in the meanwhile, she developed, developed a body mistrust block, of course, because she kept you know, kept getting a negative pregnancy test so she couldn't get pregnant. So there's there's blocks that once one spirals in another, but that's with secondary infertility. I have almost like 95% success, uh, Julia. That's, that's odd, but it, to me, it's so explainable because there's a reason. And usually it's either during the whole pregnancy or right after or birth. Th there's an explanation. And if you resolve that, then energy flows, right? To me, it makes whole, total sense what I do, working with unexplained infertility, because there's a reason and it interferes. And then what is underneath, what you can't see in this iceberg, that's where the subconscious lives. And that's where the subconscious rules the body. That's where we can find the answers. And that's, I zoom right in there when I have a client, like, uh, I can, my x-ray is within five minutes, not the physical x-ray, but the energetic x-ray. And I pinpoint exactly what's going on. And we can figure that out. Right. Because you're using your intuition to help people heal themselves, help women heal themselves. And so you're getting guided through your intuition to pinpoint, boom. And I, as you know, I work with a lot of women as well on the energetic side who are dealing with fertility and wanting to be moms. And I send every one of them to you. Every one of them. I love that. We'll, I love we'll work on the physical level. And then, and I've been doing that for years, as you know, they all, they all know about Miss Saskia. You need to talk to this woman. She's, she can help you because your success rate, your success rate is just off the charts with helping women get pregnant and have babies, not just get pregnant, but also end up being, you know, being a mom. Because I know there's a percentage of your clients that have had multiple miscarriages and they're frustrated by that. And they have. And, and the thing is with multiple miscarriages, of course, 
I go from the fact that physically they're okay, right? They're physically, they're checked, so the hormones are fine, but why do they keep miscarrying or what what's going on underneath? And yes, I have my intuition where I can zoom into that, but there's also um, often a logical explanation. I find it logical, right? If there is a, a deep fear, I had one woman and she kept miscarrying, but she had secondary infertility, but the birth, she almost died. So the logic is here that her body doesn't feel safe. That, that's what I always say. That she doesn't feel safe to birth again because she thinks, what if I die? Well, the body listens to your thoughts. So the body will say, oh, oh no, we won't do that. So they, 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 they block unless she releases that deeper trauma block, then yes, then she can conceive. So it's interesting. I do an exercise with my client, clients um, and I guide them through the stages of pregnancy and some, I have them visualize and body, like how does it feel? You're three months pregnant and, and then they come to month five and they're like, oh, oh no, I can't see that. No, I can't go there. Well, for me, then we got to do some work here because if she can't go past month five, it will always end before that, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because the body listens, there's this fear, so the body contracts. The body is either in contraction, in fear, fight and flight, or the body is open and open to conceive. And that's why the success rate is high because it, it takes a little bit, of course, to, to get you from your body running on the fear program to going on the open to conceive program. So you go from, ah, I can't get pregnant, I'm infertile, to yes, I can get pregnant. And you embody your body like, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I can get pregnant. And I think in my, when I revert back to um, myself, most fertility coaches come from they they couldn't conceive they had a problem and they figured that out and they become coaches i come from the opposite direction where since i i think was a baby i always felt so fertile regardless if i was or not i i don't even know i think once a and um, later on a hormone doctor said i don't understand why you, we were had all these pregnancies and um i'm like yeah but I, I, it was my mantra, like I'm so fertile. And I think there's something to say for that, which, you know, I want my, all my clients to get to that point. <laughs> let's, let's dissect that for a minute. Cause I know you taught at the university level in the Netherlands. Tell us about that and tell us how that prepared for you in the work that you now, you do now with women who you're helping become moms. The the connection is it was an experimental psychology and I'm super interested in that. It's always been a passion of mine. And this was where they were studying behavior and how you could change behavior. And I think I have a deep interest in our behavior. I have a deep interest in how the subconscious mind informs our body and, and how how our um, bodies are a manifestation of all of what's going on. It's just not a body where we, we were influenced by, by our, our thinking, our behavior, our emotions. And that's where I've kept going on. I'm, I'm still studying, um, yeah, until this day because it fascinates me, but it has everything to do with fertility because our fertile energy, or if you give birth, for example, if if you're in fear, the body locks up. If you are in fear, and they call it contraction, right? Which I find so odd and wrong because it's expansion, contraction, but contraction is like, so you tighten up. So how can a woman birth when you tighten up? But it's, it's this movement when you birth, and I birthed my babies in half an hour. And I, I, the, only, the only reason why I did that, because 
when I gave birth and I looked at my belly, I couldn't figure it out in my hand because I didn't understand how, how can you birth a big baby? How, how can you? I didn't understand. I birthed at home. So then I thought, well, my body probably knows because I do not know. I do not get it. I, the midwife came and she said, oh, you can push. And I'm like, okay, body, you, you take care of this. And, and this is the short story and it's, it's the surrender, but our bodies are so wise. So I burst them out in, in like a, a big ohm where I just watched like my body do it. I'm like, you know what? I'm out of here. <laughs> I do not know this. So my body took over my body. Yeah, my body wanted this baby out, right? It was time and my body started to do it. It's just, I squatted down and I did it. So um, I wish I could have that level of surrender in my life, Julie, but <laughs> those moments I had it where the birthing went. But it, it, it's the body, it's so wise, but we screw it up with our mind. Well, I think you bring up a really good point because every woman I know, myself included, perhaps excluding you, at the end of the pregnancy, we all have had the thought of, oh, God, I got to get this baby out of here now. Whoa. And I remember thinking to myself, OK, trillions of women have done this. Maybe not trillions, but billions, certainly probably trillions at this point. Trillions of women have done this and they've survived. Ryan, you can, too. And every one of my girlfriends is given birth. We all laugh about that, but we all had the same thought. And I only birthed one, my Jonathan, but the I have friends that have several kids and they said they had that thought every time. Is that a cultural thing? I don't know what it is. And I can tell you that every birth, I would go like, oh my God. God. And then the friends would say, well, you just pooped them out. I'm like, I, you know, I have to get in that mind space, but oh boy. And I'm, I have a small frame, but I had eight and a half pound. My, one of them was eight and a half pound baby. I mean, with him, we were having dinner. It was 9.45. We had dinner. He was overdue. I mean, he was 10 days, 11 days overdue we're having dinner and they're like, do you want a dessert? I'm like, oh, I don't think so. I feel my belly and I don't know. I said to my husband, let's go home. And we went home and we opened the door and my water broke and I ran upstairs and my husband's like holding his hands underneath me. Like, and I basically, I squatted down. It was 9.45 when we were at the restaurant and the baby was born 10 past 10. So you can imagine how fast there was just, okay, go for it, do it, body, you, and our bodies can, but we, with our minds, it's, it's, it's in the way. And, and I think surrender is something so incredibly, but every single time with every baby, I was like, oh my God, will I pull this off? Because I, I gotta get in that right space, <sighs> do it. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love it. Well, well, back to that. What what is it about the mind? You know, I always say that our thoughts create our reality. What's going on there? And and you've talked about several instances where once we got the thoughts lined up correctly, the body just followed suit. I use the example a lot of watching a scary movie or a sad movie. And I use the example of Terms of Endearment in the 80s when that movie came out. Did you see that movie? I did. Shirley MacLaine. I, 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 I don't I know anymore. But what I, I watched it, yes. Oh, my God. It was so sad. It was so sad. Or, or Steel Mag Magnolias, same thing. And I remember uh it, just being in a movie theater and holding my breath because i thought i am gonna just start wailing here and i'll just i'll just disturb everybody around me and i knew it was pretend i knew it was a movie i knew it was hollywood magic but it affected my emotions and my body so much so what is going on there 
why why does that happen with fertility and with everything else? You know, our minds, unfortunately, I think the, the mind is the, the, the worst problem because we live in, we, we leave our body and we go in our mind. And I'm saying this as if I master it and I do not. I mean, I'm, I'm a piece of work myself. But I do know that my mind is, uh, you know, the mind has, we all know that already, about 60,000 thoughts and it keeps giving them. And yeah, if we believe these thoughts, then it's, it's, it's a problem. The biggest piece of our suffering is believing our thoughts because the mind doesn't even make sense. It keeps giving, 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 giving. And I mean, control our thoughts, that would be great if we could because we would only think happy thoughts, right? If you, if you think I'm too old and you keep, keep, this is what I teach my clients. I don't believe in affirmations. I think affirmations are great if you've released your deeper fears underneath. Yeah, then you can do that. But for example, if you think, oh, I am too old, you're, you're not going to say I'm young because you don't believe that the mind will reject that. But if you open the mind slightly, you, the mind is curious. That's, that's a very interesting thing. The mind is curious. So if you would say, what if I'm the perfect circumstances and age to conceive, that is entertainable, right? You, you can think, oh yeah, maybe. Yeah. And then if you, then I say, okay, find three good reasons why that could be true. Well, I still ovulate, um, I get my periods, um, I am healthy. Then, and you start practicing that, it's like, re this is what I do with my clients, rewiring their minds, that's the foundation. And then when they rewire their minds, at some point, I had one client and she had many uh, failed IVFs. And she even said to me, oh, I know when I had these IVFs, I, I kind of knew it would fail. So then we start rewiring our mind, taking away, releasing the deeper fears. At some point she said, I saw somebody who was pregnant outside. And for the first time I thought, wow, this is me in a little while. And guess what? She did get pregnant and it, it, it happened, but it's, it's the rewiring of the mind. I mean, it's not hocus pocus. I say this is scientifically based. If you start to rewire your mind and it starts to get consistent, right? Where, where you're not halfway your cycle, you're going to flip to hopelessness. And then for two weeks you're hopeless and then you start hoping again. No, where you start rewiring the mind and you rewire the body. And what the cool thing is, is it impacts everything because your eggs are some of my clients they say have really low egg quality and you can improve that that's so fascinating because the egg you release i always say in april is the egg the egg in january release is the egg in april to to ovulate for four months 420 days this egg is traveling if you're anxious all the time and if you're sad and if you keep thinking, oh, my eggs are bad, eh, you know, it affects the quality of the eggs. And that's where women have a lot of power, but they need to learn the consistency. But you, you can do so much before I say go to IVF or before donor eggs or anything, because donor eggs I have seen can work but sometimes don't work because you plant a, a good egg into a body, into a woman that's wired with, what if I miscarry? And what if I don't trust my body? What if it goes wrong? And on and on and on. And it's not aligned. And then, yeah, they miscarry. So I've, I've seen how that works. Yeah. Well, it seems to me that when we have a negative thought, and I teach this, and you know this, my two-minute rule. When we have a negative thought, it's whether it's a rational fear or an irrational fear, because any negative thought's always based in fear. 
we go into fight or flight. And what happens from a physiological standpoint, we're releasing the stress hormones where, you know, we're our blood is draining from our brain. We're not thinking clearly and all of that. So it's going to have, it seems to me, as a cascading effect on not only from an emotional standpoint, but since thoughts create our reality, it's going to affect physiologically. And if they're heightened cortisol levels and things like that, that's not good to conceive, I would imagine. It, it, it impacts the whole hormonal panel, but I am not into, I mean, I know of the physical aspects and all of that, but I know how it impacts the fertile energy because the body says if it's in fight and flight, it's not safe. So what you will see is, okay, so then the body is going to kind of stop the egg production or it's not going to go on full swing because the body said, well, why would we? Because I'm on fight and flight. I'm in fear. And that, yeah, that, that impacts fertile energy very much. I mean, it impacts if we go back to the birthing. They say as soon as women walk into the hospital, this is science scientifically proven, immediately the contractions stop because they're like, oh, you know, and it makes sense because there's too much light. The body doesn't like that because I think back in the days we would kind of make it dark. So there's all these things that happen because there's fear coming up and in fear you, you, you don't birth. Yeah. And fear contracts the body. So yeah, it's so true what you're saying. Well, and we've all been trained to think in probably what the last hundred years or so, maybe even less here in America, especially that oh, you don't want to birth at home because if you, you know, what if something happened and you need to be in the hospital? So we've all been trained. I was born in a hospital. My parents who were born in the 1920s were born in a hospital. So I think that we, especially here, have been trained that that's where you have your baby is in the hospital. And to your point earlier, you come into that environment and it's just, sometimes it's it's really frightening. Yeah. And I think hospitals are hospitals are doing things to make it more comfortable. They're trying to have and have been for a long time with the birthing suites and you can bring in the music and all that, that kind of stuff. But when you get there, usually you're in the hospital because somebody's sick or there's an emergency. So I would think that affects the brain as well, going into the fight or flight and the fear component. I never thought about it that way before. Interesting concept. I even think if if we would have animals that are in the birthing process and suddenly you're going to move them to a whole different environment and lights are on, I can almost sense that, of course, they they, they would contract. Now, my I'm, I'm Dutch, so this is my benefit, of course. And I remember I had my first son when I lived in Taiwan. And I'm this young girl, 31 years old, and I go to a hospital and I went to this American hospital and they already planned my C-section. And I, I was like, well, why do I have to have a C-section? What, what, why would that be? Well, it's safer, it's better. And, and all my girlfriends at that time, they were like expat girlfriends. There, there were a few Dutch and English and whatever. They were all planned for C-sections. And I'm like, no, that's not what I'm going to do. But my dad was a doctor. So all, all the babies in our house, and I'm one of five, they were all born. So for me, it was like, I think even a body experience of, yeah, babies are born at home. And I didn't know any better that that was how it happened. My grandmother had seven children, and I think all of them were born at home. So that's kind of installed in my brain too. So I had an advantage. So I, I didn't want to, I went to a Chinese hospital there. I birthed my first baby and the rest, I was like, I do this at home. But yeah, it makes a lot of sense that if, if you're programmed like that, you, you want to be safe. And I, I don't blame women, but I do know that birthing is a sacred art and I'm very sad that it's lost um, and that you know, the way it's, it's gone now. 
I, I think of their rice paddy worker women. You know, they say they'd squat, they'd have the baby, they'd slap the baby like in a backpack on their back and they'd keep working in the rice paddy. That's paddies. how I did it. I mean, oh, water breaks. I, I sit down and I push this baby out and that, that's that's that. Um, but they they literally do that. Are you seeing a trend in your clients that more are using midwives and and getting back kind of to the ancient or no? No, no, no. They 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 all go to the hospital and they're so used to the hospital because they they are. Yeah, but I encourage them <laughs> when they get pregnant. I. I, I have a program, stick to me baby program that I give to them. And then I, one of part of it is that I teach them, I talk about birth as well, because I think if they want to take the chance, it's gorgeous. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm finding that a lot of my clients are hiring midwives and, oh, uh, wow. and I like you work with women from all over the world. And I know you do as well. And it's, it's, very much becoming a trend that there will be a midwife in the room at the hospital. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's back up a minute because I want to talk to, especially the women that want to be moms. I mean, the, the birthing thing is one thing, but we got to get there first. And I know you utilize past life regression work, Akashic records, shamanic, Reiki, Eastern healings, about, among other methodologies to help your clients. Why? How did that come about? What are you doing? Give us, can you give us a couple of examples of maybe things that you did with clients that really helped them? Yeah, it was very interesting because I was an avid student. My my first interest was was very much like how how are all the all the things that we have going on in our body related? What emotions are attached, or what past lives are attached, and what what is going on? So that was always, always there. And I did a lot of soul purpose coaching where I helped women, also men, look at what was blocking them. Why, if you want to write a book, what what is in the way? Why can't you? What What is in the way? Where can we look deeper? Because the technique we can all get down. So I always wanted to look deeper. And in the meanwhile, I studied, I did a lot of healing with my hands because I that came natural since I was very young. I was very intuitive, so I could hear things or see things. I, um, yeah, so that was a very natural progression of, of, of who I was, who I am. And then in my work, there were more and more fertility clients coming to me, and it was fascinating. And then what was so cool, I started using all these different techniques where I'm like, okay, so she, I had one client, for example, she, she had one child and she said, I'm so obsessed and I'm so scared. I cannot leave this child out of my sight. And in the meanwhile, for five years or four years, she was trying to get pregnant, but with either it was a miscarriage or it never worked. And she couldn't leave this kid alone and she said, well, my neighbor is taking care of my daughter, but I, I, I'm just worried sick. So I'm like, well, that is interesting because that is probably a past life where something happened maybe with her child. And we did, she was a private client of mine. We did a past life regression. She released it and it was just a hundred percent change where she went from being scared that kid could, could not play anywhere to suddenly she said, well, somebody asked if my daughter could play and this kid play. And she was a different person. She came, became pregnant, I think within six weeks later, she was pregnant because suddenly she, all that fear, it, it wasn't there anymore and her body opened up to conceive. So that is an interesting 
example where there th that was clearly how you know we released that fear and how that happened another example is where this was a woman who this was not a past life but she she kept trying to conceive with IVF and she couldn't and I asked her about her history and well there there was nothing there and she said well I've worked with a therapist and no I'm I'm good and then I'm like I think something happens when you were 21 and she said oh yeah something did but I'm over that it's good I'm over that and I'm like ah, I don't think so what what happened and she was raped and she became pregnant and she aborted the baby well it it was in her her body that she did this and she felt guilty and it was still in her body so that's where where then you know I did womb healing and I do everything basically on distance because I have clients all over the world back in the days I uh, this is really back in the days, 20 years ago, I had my, my office and my treating room and then people would come in and I would feel with my hands and I love all that, Julie, and, you know, do all that stuff and use sound bowls and people came to me in person. Now they don't. So yeah, we did womb healing with this woman and I, I can, I can do it like that. I can feel into the womb. I can read the wombs. Like, is there... I do that with every client, basically, where I read like what's going on in her womb, where is there still energy in there, where are, is my attention, and we have to clean the womb because the womb needs to be a beautiful space to conceive the baby. Um, so it's amazing because now I, I use all the things I've learned in different modalities, wh whatever is up with the client. I'm sure you do the same. You, you grab from here or here, but it's very organically. I'm not so much into like, oh, now this is shamanic or this is Reiki or this is that. It, it's just, okay, let's do this. Let's do that. But there is also a ton of which is not which is very down to earth where we retrain the brain, reset where we release deeper trauma. I work a lot with color because color is very, um, very powerful um, color healing. But um, yeah, it works. And you know that the, the, this, this, this works. Yeah. Well, and I do the same thing. I'm never with anybody in person unless they're a family member usually. And it, the only one I live with now is my husband. So. Um, it's all distance, but I don't, but I don't notice a difference to you between the in-person and the distance. It's the same thing. It's all energy, right? Me, it's, it's easier because I can listen really well and, and I'm not distracted by anything. I, it, it, it's, it's, it's in, in our listening. It works better for me, uh, this way and it's much faster, much, much faster. I, we, we, we are not holed up in any way, right? We can just do our thing. I always say I'm like a surgeon, right? Go in, take it out, close it up, and now we're good. Yeah. Yeah, same thing. I see something, there's a healing, boom, let's go. And then it integrates into the body. But it's, you're not healing anything. I'm not healing anything. We're helping the person heal themselves is what's going on. And I find that fascinating. And no doctor heals anybody else either or any medical provider of any sort. We're all helping the person heal themselves. And to your point earlier, we don't know what their past lives have been. We don't know what their path is that they're exploring in this lifetime. Certainly when they come to you, they're exploring fertility and pregnancy issues that they're wanting to really dissect and get help with. And that's what you do. You help them with that. I got a couple of questions about what you mentioned with those examples. First of all, what do you remember what the past life was that that one client had a past life and then she got pregnant six weeks later? Yeah, it's so funny. You ask me that now. So I don't remember those things, but it comes in now. So I, I, I get it. Uh, one of yeah, I think 
the, her child drowned and um, she was there. So she was still in blame and she hadn't paid enough attention. I can give you another example, which I vividly remember. Um, this woman, she, uh, she, she had two children, um, but her past life, was, but the birth were horrendous. So every time she gave birth, it was just, it was, it was horrible. It took three days and I regressed her to a past life where she was at war and and she was on a horse and yeah the baby needed to be born but it was war so she had to go so she she needed to get on that horse in labor and she she couldn't she have lost a child it it it, it was a horrible experience so when we released that experience from going three days in birthing she went to three hours and it, it was amazing when when you release you release it it, it pass, yeah it's 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 very powerful it's not in the body anymore because you hold it yeah do you find that when you do identify a past life like that and i i do the same thing and i'll get where it was and when it was and a little bit about what happened do you find that as soon as you illuminate it that it's eradicated do you find that it heals right away as soon as we illuminate it? Sometimes they need more because back in the days, I don't do that anymore, even though I may pick that up again. I would do a few, like also do a past life then where, for example, say this is a past life, a woman can't get pregnant and um, things happened in the past. I see, I see what they see and sometimes they don't see it, but I can see see what they see in these past lives but then there is this this pattern somehow it ends up in infertility but then when we release that i also want them in a in a past life where they were so fertile and where they had many children so we reactivate that in the body too because the body remembers and then we yeah bring that back that memory in the body yeah that makes tons of sense yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Interesting how you combine that with multiple past lives. When I get somebody, and I don't do regression, I do what I call as a past life scan. So I envision myself in this endless hallway and will ask a question. And in the hallway, very narrow walls, very tall ceiling, there are these 12 inch by 12 inch squares lining the walls vertically and horizontally in columns. And I'll say, show me the past lives that Susie had that are affecting her infertility issues. And those mirrors, Saskia, will come out from the wall as if they're on a hydraulic arm. And then I'll say, show me the one that correlates the most. That one will come out the farthest. And then I'll envision myself going into it. And I'll be given the scene of what we're talking about. So I think we're doing the same thing just in a different way. But I, but I love that you're saying, okay, Let's override that neural pathway that I can't conceive, can't conceive, and go to a past life where I had 15 kids or however many kids. Yeah. Interesting. Absolutely. I love that. The, but there's, there's so many ways, which is, you know, sometimes I think, yeah, you, the, the, you could just do all these different things with them. Uh, because there, there's there's amazing healing modalities. But you're led, it seems to me that you're led into what technique to use with that client at that moment in time. And the same thing happens with me too. Um, I call those divine downloads. It's like I got God giving me information, spirit giving, feeding information into my head at the same time that I'm talking and working with the client. Real, real quickly and then, and then I want to change gears for a minute. Real quickly, you mentioned color therapy. I'm fascinated by that. Can you give us an example of yeah. a, a client with whom you use color therapy and how did it work? Yeah. Um, color therapy, of course, back in the days, I started with real color lamps, right? With, with put, because I, I would sense what color they need. And then we all know the study that colors 
healing and do all that. So that there were physical, <laughs> physical colors on the people. And now it's, 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 it's long distance. So, um, an example, um, I had one of my clients who, um, I guided her into the womb. She, she had 16 filled IVFs. She kept doing it and kept doing it. An IVF is not a numbers game, right? Because if it, if it's not working, well, what's going on? And if it's not physical, well, if it's, if it's an emotional block or a mental block, then you don't get pregnant with IVF. I think that's why IVF fails so often. And I'm not against IVF, but if you haven't looked deeper, what's going on, then why would IVF work? So anyway, so she had 16 IVFs and we looked into her womb and her womb looked so depleted and so dry and, and um i said to her to her i i felt that was the color we needed i said imagine that there's this pot of gold with liquid fertile gold and you paint the walls of your room with this gold and she she did that um and she designed her room like in this most magnificent palace temple which was awesome um we also did other work, uh, you know, her mindset and she rewired her brain and all of that. And she had also emotional blocks. She had a very big fear of motherhood. Would she be a good mom? All that. So that, that, that I see that a lot. So we did all of that. And then she went back to the clinic and the 17th IVF, boom, it worked. And the whole clinic was raving. She said it, it was amazing. Um, she was then pregnant and she has, yeah, brought that as a beautiful full term. Yeah. Great. Okay. I want to switch gears for a minute and just do rapid fire, different infertility issues. You give me a quick answer. Boom. I don't want to spend a lot of time on each one, but let's do them quickly. What are the four major, what are the four major fertility blocks that you talk about? that I talk about is the mindset block when you go in obsessive thinking. It's the body mistrust block where you start doubting like, oh, my body doesn't work, my wound is not good, my eggs are too old. The emotional block where you go from hopeless to hopeful, this, this roller coaster riding. And then the trauma block where you have unexplained fears like what if I die or what if I'm not a good mom or or blocks like that, and they interfere a hundred percent with fertility. Um, they do because they bring you on the fear program. Great. Second question: The age of conception seems to be getting older and older, especially in our Western societies. Is that an issue? Well, it's an issue if you believe that you're too old. And I'm in the position where my clients are usually over 40 and they come to me, they're 46 or 47 and they say, am I too old? Well, I don't know if they 100% believe that for sure they are, but if they still, their body functions, you know, there, there's possibilities and I've seen a lot of miracles. So, you know, where, where it can become a problem is, um, yeah, where, where the doctors won't treat them anymore. Yes, I've heard that from several clients. Yes. What if a woman is told that her eggs aren't any good or a man has a low sperm count? Oh, I love that. Well, number one, low sperm count. <laughs> My standard answer is always you only need one sperm. So I, I think there's, there's lots of supplements and good food that, that can change that. Um, a low egg or count or low egg quality. It's a specialty of mine because I, um, I have like a mini, mini, mini program where a woman for hardly anything, they, they can improve their egg count naturally because I'm a believer that, yeah, if, if, if you watch your mind, 
um, if you change your emotions, your whole body starts to be different and it impacts the eggs. So you, you can do a ton about that. that. That's no problem. I have a couple of clients in the last, I would say probably two years, two come to mind where they had something and they lost an ovary and they were told that they wouldn't be able to conceive. So we regenerated their ovary with stem cell energy, Saskia, and it had all new eggs in it. Both of them have babies now. Both of them got pregnant, had perfect births. Their babies are doing great. And, and the thing that was so fascinating about that to me was when I watched those ovaries get regenerated, they were full of new eggs. So it was like, we were giving them ovaries of a 25-year-old or maybe even younger. All their same DNA. I mean, everything. It, it, it was amazing. So I've seen that twice so far in the last couple of years using stem cell energy with that. Okay, two last questions. Why did we incarnate? Oh, I think... Our souls are so eager to learn, but we, we, it, it, it's the soul's journey and we incarnate in, in where our soul needs to grow. And that's why we should take the lessons that are on our path. And in the fertility journey, there is a lot of soul's growth. I, I do a lot of soul work with them as well because they forget their soul. They are only like thinking about the body and and your baby soul chooses you because who you are at soul level but it's it's the growth my um this is my idea um my youngest son i was pregnant of him i had four kids pregnant of him and at three months i i miscarried him and i always felt that he his energy probably was too big for me to hold yet um, I got pregnant again, I think five or six months later of him, but there, there was soul growth to do and, and, um, uh, soul growth is, it can be tough, but you got to. Absolutely. Well, you know, I think you're extraordinary. I think the work you do is just magnificent, which is why I always refer my clients that are interested in conceiving and being a mom to you. You're my first referral. I send them to you. How can how can everybody find you and learn more about you and the work that you're doing? Yeah, it's it's pretty simple. I think uh, you go to get pregnant now, dot com, get pregnant now. That's what you want probably. If you want to have a baby, get pregnant now, dot com. And I have a super good 15 second quiz where you can diagnose yourself, where you can see, oh, do I have a mindset block or a trauma block or, and I explain a lot about it. So you get videos and all that stuff. And then still you go to get pregnant now, forward slash quiz. And then you, yeah, you have your answer. Like, why am I not getting pregnant? Maybe you don't, but maybe you do have there. There's a mindset block or how it affects you. And yeah. And I love to talk to you. So then there you can set up a talk and, and we can see if and how I can help you. Yeah. I believe I I believe every woman is fertile. It's it's just your innate nature. But it's it's like almost like you're you're maybe to to just to the wrong radio station, right? I have these stations that, that I like here. And then if I'm just, there's too much static on the line if I'm not fully attuned. So we, we, we create that alignment and where your body opens to conceive. It's, that's how we're born, right? We're, we are fertile. In, 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 in fertility, I don't like that diagnose either. It's, it's just, let's get you pregnant now. <laughs> right. Well, and as I mentioned when we started our conversation, I have a, a quite a few clients who are wanting to conceive themselves. And I have just as many, maybe even more mothers and grandmothers who want to help their daughter or granddaughter on her path as she's wanting to be a mom because it affects the whole family with that stress that comes with it when they've been given 
some diagnosis. And I love that you say, hey, everybody's fertile. It doesn't matter what you've been diagnosed with or about. Let's, you know, let's have a conversation. Let's see what we need to do to get you pregnant now. Yeah, it is. It is such a, well, they say it's, it's such an invisible struggle where women feel down to their core. They, they feel touched in their femininity because they, yeah, it's, 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 it's really something that affects them very deeply. And I think the whole family, it affects very deeply. It's this innate thing you, you, you want to do and you expect from yourself and your body that you should be able to, but there's, you know, there's so much more, of course, the physical aspect, but then it's explainable in, in 99%. And I wrote a book, the naked truth of unexplained infertility, where I It says 55 stories, but it's, I think, 76 stories um, of women where they had these fears or I I write all the different stories. It's a storybook. Um, So that is something of anyone. There's Kindle, I think it's $2.99 or whatever. I don't even know. But it it's super readable. I hear from women, they, they read it in one go and it's so encouraging because there are, there are stories of women who had the most horrible fertility journeys and they are moms now. And I believe, yeah, I believe that we are fertile in nature and we can get back to that state. Well, and more so that you believe it, but you, you've experienced it in helping Many, many women around the world realize that as well. So thank you for, thank you on behalf of humanity for the work that you're doing to help moms become pregnant and uh, help populate the world. All right, everybody, that's it for this week. It's sending you lots of love from Sweet Home, Alabama. Mwah! And from Massachusetts too, where Saskia is. We'll see you next time. To enhance your spiritual journey, click on one of the videos below and remember to subscribe, leave a comment, and share with your family and friends.